Now, according to some activists, the grim reality is that this country's democracy is in tatters, shredded by dodgy, fantastically corrupt politicians. So how can we improve the odds of electing good, responsible leaders? Well, that's what groups like the Coalition for the Protection of Democracy are aiming to do. The Coalition is a subgroup of obedient movements from across Nigeria who say that their experience in the 2023 presidential election laid bare the anarchy of Nigerian politics. As a result, they say they are determined to look out for candidates who they believe will be good leaders and to lend whatever support they can to help them achieve victory at the polls. But what difference are they likely to make in a world that's seething with corruption, where big, dirty money seems to always have its way? Well, from all this, I'm joined now in the studio by the legal advisor to the Coalition for the Protection of Democracy, Barrister Ifani Inrealike. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Chess. Um, what do you make, first of all, of that violent attack that was unleashed on the SDP's Muritala Ajakia, who was just sitting where you were sitting. Apparently because, according to them, he had the guts to challenge the victory of Governor Usman Ododo in court. It is uh, very quite uh, unfortunate because the truth about it is that Nigeria is passing through a very difficult phase. Mm. There is lack of tolerance. What we are having is not a democratic government. What we are having is civilian dictatorship in all fairs. Everybody in any area that you are in control of politically, you try to be anarchic. And that is the unfortunate development. That particular thing you are seeing is a, a political intimidation. How dare you challenge the victory? I put that victory in question mark. Mm. How dare you challenge the victory of the governor? And as far as they are concerned, the governor is the Alpha and Omega. Mm a person whose word must be obeyed, whose political action must be obeyed. Somebody who can speak and no other person can say no. He is His Excellency. They and of course, um, some of those people, I mean, he mentioned some names, yes. but obviously we don't have any evidence to yes. indict those people. But potentially some of those people in that attacking mob are the kind of people who either um, are or will become politicians and who could one day get elected and those are the people your group is trying to prevent from getting into office. Exactly because what they are doing is that they are learning, they are undergoing political tutelage, political tutelage in violence, political tutelage in lack of uh, tolerance, political tutelage in the way politics cannot be played. It is a show of might. If you are not with us, will be tied you. That is the time. And it paints a grim picture. Mm. That is what we are trying to do. We have looked at it from left, from right, and we say that something must be done. We can't keep quiet. This is not a case of if you can't beat them, you join them. No. We will keep on fighting. So, so tell us in that regard about COPDEM, which is the Coalition for the Protection of Democracy. Um, I understand it's a sort of political action group. Yes, it is a political action group. You know, COPDEM was uh, formed when we started seeing the way things are going and when we decided to and told ourselves, look, we must take our destiny into our hands. And we decided to come together. And uh, the COPDEM was as a result of uh, you know, before then, there was uh, the obedient movement. And, uh, well, presumably there still is yes, the obedient there is, movement. There, yes, right. yes. And uh, we came together, about 46 groups of them, and so many. We came together, decided to form this COP them. And as the name applies, implies, it is the Coalition for the Protection of Democracy. Because we are afraid that democracy is dying. What we are having it's no longer democracy. If you go out and you ask children, what are you, the people will tell you, there is loss of hope. But we cop them is here to preach hope, to keep on fighting and striving to see whether it is still possible for us in our own particular way to bring about change. It is that particular 
aspiration that made us as a group to come together and said, no, enough is enough. Right. And we have to start early. And one of the effective ways of doing it is to make sure of those that ascend political leadership. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to come to. I mean, you're looking for politicians who can be good leaders. So yes. you obviously have a vetting process. Exactly. You, after which you then decide you're going to support them. Exactly. Have you seen any that meet your standards? Yes. You can see some days ago, we, we, there was a news item by the Obedience Support Group. And that obedience movement, we endorsed a person who we think that is good enough for the upcoming election in Anambra State. And that person happens to be Valentine Chineto Ozibo. Mm. We have followed him. We have watched him. We have studied others. And at the end of the day, we found out that he may be the answer that we are looking for. It is on that basis that we came out unequivocally to say that this is the man that we will, we will support in uh, next year's uh, gubernatorial election in Anambra State. Because we must start somewhere. If we are able to support him and he gets the ticket and he wins the general election and at the end of the day he comes in, there must be positive change. And why him in preference to Charles Saluda, who's a very well-known, very well-respected you know, professor um, who was the former governor of the Nigerian Central Bank. I mean, he, he's got lots of, if you like, pedigree behind him. Leadership is about three six. There is the credibility. There is the competence. And most importantly, there is the compassion. As you are here now, ask yourself a simple question. Before now, apart from his academic progress, apart from his uh, banking progress, what about the compassionate side of leadership? Have you ever heard about something concerning that as it relates to Professor Charles Soludo? The answer is simple, no. But when you come to Valentine Ozubu, we check so many persons. This is a man that is philanthropic. And as we are talking about this man, this, was, this is a man that have impacted in over 300,000 lives. He has helped women, widows. And this is a man, apart from that particular thing, he, has, he equally has a foundation, Valentine Chibo Chineto uh, Ozibo Foundation, VCO. Through this foundation, he has been helping. And this is a man that is equally involved in sports. Sports is a tool with which you can change the entire system and move people from poverty to well-being. It can change a system because of what he has been doing in sports through his feet and tricks, limited, the limited liability company which he registered. He has been recognized worldwide and is currently, as we are speaking, a non-executive director of the board of world Fit and Trick uh, World uh, Freestyle Football Association. That is awesome for a private individual. When you talk about the philanthropic nature of his work, he has, he has compassionate for the mm. poor, for the less privileged, for the widows, for women. Right. So, for so that's why you've chosen to yes, support it. That compassion but, is very important. Right. Apart from the credibility, mm. because everything that Professor Charles Soludo has in terms of competence, this is a seasoned banker. He has gone through. He, he was the president of uh, Transcorp PLC. And as the CEO of Transcorp PLC, he was able to move for the seven years that he was there. He was able to move the Transcorp PLC into an international conglomerate. It, they are involved in energy. They are involved in uh, uh, hospitality management and so many things. Right. Well, moving away from that, I mean, you, you were talking about failing, disappointing politicians. Yes. Um, I wonder what you think of the Labour Party. I mean, I'm saying that because you are an obedient. Yes. Um, I wonder what you think of the Labour Party, which seems to fall far short from what we're seeing lately of being the credible party of competence that 
had the support of the base of the obedient movement of which you are a part. Yes, you can see in that our press release, press conference, we clearly made it clear. We are not members of Labour Party. Labour Party was just a vehicle because as at that particular time, when we looked for credible candidate to support, we found Pitobi, the presidential candidate who eventually ran on the platform of Labour candidate. And because of that, we moved our support base to support him. Mm. And that was the, how the name, acronym, because before Labour, there was obedient movement. And uh, when, as we are finding out that the Labour... You mean before he joined Labour? Yeah, because the Labour Party yes, was there. Yes, before Labour, there was obedient movement. Right. And the P2B, His Excellency P2B Kuali made it very clear that as, at, as late as uh, June 2024, two months ago, that when you come, that obedient movement mm. is different from Labour Party. And that is why we are now telling Labour Party, particularly in Anambra State, because as we are speaking now, Labour Party is being hijacked. The Congress that we are held in Anambra State, complete sham. And the essence is that a particular person, whom we don't want to mention on it, has been promised the gubernatorial ticket for labor. The truth about it is that obedient movement is different from labor. Right. And that is why we have decided to sift through the candidates and <coughs> decided to support Valo Zibo. Mm. Anywhere he goes, the labor movement will go. But I mean, does Peter B still command a very large, almost fanatical following amongst the obedience or, or is disappointment starting to creep in? Uh, you, the truth about it is that you may ask yourself what actually gave Valentine Uzbo the edge. I'm not talking about Valentine. I know. I'm I know. Peter, I'm trying to right. say what actually, because that will answer the question. Right. What actually gave Valentine Uzbo the edge? Valentine Uzbo was the special advisor to His Excellency during the just concluded election. He was in charge of uh, uh, technology and strategic alliance for the president and was equal uh, his excellency and was equally part of those that helped in raising substantially fund and we watched the way he 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 ran he was the early believer he was one of the early believers in the competence and capacity of his excellency p2b so we watched uh, at the close at close range the way he has been able yeah, but again, yes. I'm talking yes, about Yes, I know, I know. I'm, I'm asking like, you a very straightforward yes, question. Yes. We haven't got all the time in the yes, world. Yes. Does he still command a very large, almost fanatical following amongst the obedience, or is disappointment starting to creep in? I mean, I ask that because we've seen some of his lieutenants yes. starting to walk away, yes. such as Kenneth Okonkwo, for example, Isaac Balami. Yes. Um, Kenneth, of course, felt that Mr. B was not acting decisively to resolve a lot of the issues in the Labour Party. Yes. What is your position yes. on the that? The truth about it is that there is, there is a, uh, the fanatical support base of His Excellency is waning. But the it's truth waning. is waning because right. of the issue. You know, it was just like when Jesus came. People were expecting that when he, he, he will come, he will just use troops and all the things that are wrong with the world, he will just clear all of them. Incidentally, when they come, they saw even the way they arrested him like a sheep and he, he followed them on challenge. The, the truth is that they don't know His Excellency Pitobi. In as much as even on our own, we have to go beyond what we are seeing the battles and everything. We wanted him to be even be decisive as it concerns the labor squabbles in Anambra in the, at the national leadership and to give leadership direction. Incidentally, it is not exactly happening the way So we you're are. disappointed? No, I was, I'm not, but uh, the expectation, the fight, the way we wanted. Even in our press conference, we clearly stated that, please, Peter, be, be decisive. Take the bull by the horn. See to what extent you can handle the issue of Labour Party. It will help at the end of the day. Because, because so many persons climbed mm. on the back of Labour Party. Seven yeah. senatorial, seven senatorial uh, Senate seats won, 35 members of the House of Assembly, a governorship 
a, a governor in Abia State, so many House of Assemblies. And these things cannot just be there hanging on the mm. air. It will need a leadership, a direction. Well, the point is that, I mean, it's quite clear that the soul of the Labour Party seems to be crushed every day. I mean, we're, we're hearing daily reports of factions, counter-factions, troublemaking cliques, dissenting groups, splinter camps. I mean, I'm wondering how much that suggests also that the obedient movement itself, having lost out in the power struggle of 2023, is also as a movement racing towards the razor's edge? Uh, you know, the, it is uh, uh, to a very large extent expected. The truth is that if you are fighting a giant, there is a giant in the house, that is APC. If you are fighting a giant, they will do everything humanly possible to snuff out life in any opposition. And that is exactly what is happening. Parties are being hijacked. The problem we are having is not only in Labour. The same problem is there in PDP. Today, even their political leaders describe the PDP as sleeping. It is almost helpless. That is the unfortunate scenario. Politics is not played the way it should be in Nigeria. And because it is not play, it played the way it should be, just like at the beginning, we said that what is causing all this problem is lack of tolerance, political tolerance. Because uh, the way we play politics in Nigeria is not exactly the way it is played in other climes. There is need for us to play it well. And uh, incidentally, labor is suffering from the same problem as Nigerians. Right. And that's what your group is trying to see if it can we, correct. We are trying to okay. see the much. Well, we, we wish do. you all the very best. Thank uh, you very Barrister much. Ifanye Nrialike is a legal advisor uh, to the Coalition for the Protection of Democracy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching. Thank you.